Shall we rise up, please? Whatever your need may be tonight, I want you to just tell the Lord in a brief moment of time. You have a reason for coming here tonight. You want the Lord to touch your life and perform a miracle in your life. He will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, we know you are God. We know to you belongs all power, all authority, and dominion. We know that with you nothing shall be impossible. And all these who have come before you tonight, it is your pleasure to bless, to save, to heal, and to deliver. And we're asking that we will open heavens this evening in Jesus' name. Pour down mighty blessings. We know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. In the short period of time we have before us, I want you to pay close attention as I'm talking on something that is special for you. From the book of Job, chapter 22, verse 28, we see the revelation of scripture concerning the decree of faith. A man that has got acquainted with the Lord. A person who has become a child of God. Who comes into the kingdom of God. And he lives and walks and moves and talks in faith. There is a decree in his mouth. And you need to pay close attention because I'm sure you've never seen it like this before. On the decree of faith. In Job chapter 28, chapter 22, verse 28. For thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Thou is talking about an individual. And in verse 21, we are told about who that individual is. Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee. It's talking about the one who is acquainted with the Almighty. A person who has made friends with God. A person who has turned his back on his sins and is now in the path of righteousness. A person that has not got the peace of God. Sin gone. Guilt and condemnation are gone. Is now in Christ a new creature. He has the peace of God. And therefore he has received good. Such an individual will decree a sin and it shall be established unto him. Verse 22, receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thine heart. This is an individual who has received the word of God. He believes that the Bible is the word of God, not the words of men. He believes that the word of God is inspired from the beginning to the end. And he has laid up, stored up that word in his heart. Verse 23. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put iniquity away far from thy tabernacles. This is an individual who has received, who has come back 
returned to the Almighty. He is now being built up day by day, praying, seeking the face of the Lord, reading the word of God so he can grow thereby. He has put iniquity or sin far away from him, from his tabernacle. Now notice the qualities in the life of this individual. One, is now acquainted with the Almighty. Two, he is at peace. Three, he has received the word of God and he has laid that word in his, in his heart. Four, he has returned to the Almighty and is now being edified or built up day by day. There is no iniquity, number five, in his life anymore. Iniquity is far away from him. This is the individual that the Bible is saying he will decree a sin. And the moment he decrees that sin, it shall be established unto him. Now you understand this is talking about the believer. And the believer can decree a sin concerning his life. Concerning relatives that are unbelievers. Concerning friends that are saints or sinners. Concerning any problem in his community or around him. Stretch it further. This is talking about the minister of God. If that minister of God has acquainted himself with the Almighty, with prayer and supplication, is laying hold of the promises of God, he is stable and stabilized in his Christian life. As a minister of God, he has peace with God, peace with men, peace within himself, and peace in the family. And then he has received the word of God. He doesn't preach his own mind, his own intellect, his own understanding. He is laying out the word of God in his heart. If this is a man of God, he is in relationship with the Almighty and is being built up and edified in his prayer life every time and he has put iniquity away from him. Such a minister of God will decree a sin and it shall be established unto him. He can decree a sin in his own life, in his own family, in the church where God has made him a pastor. And we thank God because this is exactly what the Lord has shown us in this place. I am happy to tell you, as my own testimony, that I am acquainted with God. I know Him. He knows me. I know His Word. And I see in His Word how He has chosen me to come into the congregation and to decree a sin. When I'm not on the pulpit, well, I walk like you walk. I eat like you eat. I dress like you dress. When I come to the pulpit, the Spirit of God is upon me. The Word of God is in my mouth. And when I stand here, I do not plead with the devil. I do not try to beg him to leave. To leave. When I come and I stand up here, I decree a sin. And it is established unto me. If there are sicknesses in the congregation, I stand here not as just, you know, an ordinary believer. I stand as a minister of the gospel. I stand as a person having authority to decree. And when I decree, it has to be established. And you are here tonight because you know we are acquainted with God here. We are at peace with God. We have laid up the word of God, the promises of God in our hearts. We have returned on, unto the Almighty. We are built up, we are charged up, we are edified. And iniquity is far away from our tabernacle. And every Thursday when we come, we decree a sin in your life, in your family. And if the devil's hand is in your life, he has to remove his hand. 
if witches and wizards are chasing you, the moment you come here and we decree that they stop their harassment in your life, they have to stop. And if there is long-standing problem in your life, the moment you come here and I stand in the authority vested in me as a man of God, I decree a sin and it has to be established. Let me just tell you what it means to decree. Now, in those days, in the times of the Old Testament, only kings decreed a sin. And ordinary person could not decree anything because a decree is a law that is binding that nobody on the face of the earth can change that's why in those days kings were not used to talking carelessly because anything they said was law binding law it happened like that in every empire that the world knew it happened at the time of Egypt. Pharaoh decreed a thing and it was established. Nobody could change it. It happened in the Babylonian Empire. Nebuchadnezzar decreed a thing, it could never be changed. And the Medians and the Persians came. And Cyrus or Darius will decree a sin and it could not be changed. When the Roman Empire came, the king of Rome will decree a sin and it can never be changed. I'll just give you one example. Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6 verse 8. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians which altereth not. That's an example of a decree in those days. A decree came from a king and the king signed the decree and after it has been said and signed According to the law of the Medes and Persians, it can never be altered. Now, you understand that the New Testament believer is a king. The New Testament says so. He reigns in life according to Romans 5, 17. We are made kings and priests unto the Lord according to Revelation chapter 1 verses 5 and 6. And now we are preached according to the law. Not the law of Medes and Persians but according to the law of the spirit of life according to Romans chapter 8 verse 2. The law of the spirit and life. Now, the law of Medes and Persians operated in the physical realm, whereas the law of the spirit of life operates in the spiritual realm. The law of the Medes and Persians operated only at the times uh, Cyrus and um, Cyprus and Darius were in the kingdom. The law of the spirit of life operates all through the time Jesus the King is still on the throne. The law of the Medes and the Persians operated on people. The law of the spirit of life operates on people, on demons, on sicknesses, on Satan. And so when, as a king, in the congregation, the minister, the man of God decrees a sin according to Job chapter 22 verse 28. It is established. And I want you to realize that when Jesus Christ was on the face of the earth, every prayer he prayed was a decree. Anytime he challenged the devil, the devil could never change it because he operated in the law of the spirit of life. 
He operated by the Spirit of God. He challenged sicknesses they went. Because once as a king of kings, he decreed a thing. Nothing could change it. On the stormy sea, he spoke against the storm. The storm could, would have to come down, and it came down. And when he met sicknesses, as a king, he challenged the sickness. He decreed that the sickness will go, and it went. He sent out his own disciples, two by two, and he committed that same authority unto them. And do you know everywhere they went, they had authority over Satan. In the name of Jesus the King, these kings, the disciples, as they went out, they realized they had authority. Satan fell from heaven when they spoke. Demons trembled and left. Sicknesses went away. If they trod upon a serpent, they trod upon a serpent with a decree. The poison is gone. If they drank any deadly sin, it could not hurt them. Because the spirit of the, the Lord, the spirit of life, conquered every sin that was poisonous. And Jesus has committed that authority to the ministers of the church today. Because he has set in the church first apostles and their kings in the church. Secondly, the prophets and their kings in the church. Thirdly, teachers and their kings in the church. After that, gifts of healings and working of miracle, government, helps, diversities of tongues, and those that God has set in the church, they are kings in the church. And has set me here in this church to come against everything that is against your life, sicknesses, evil, witches and wizards, demons, and they have to leave. Now something about the kings of those days. Now those kings operated and issued a decree without any notice of any lack of power. You see, their decree did not depend upon how they felt. A king was always authoritative. He might feel cold. He might feel hot. He might feel even unhappy at times. He might feel hungry. But you know, a king, whenever he issues a word of decree, whether he is hungry or well fed, whether he's just waking up in the morning or sleeping at night, whether it's in the afternoon or in the evening, a decree from a king is always established. You know, even sometimes, a king might be sick, and right on the bed of affliction, while the king is sick, he issues a decree, while he's on bed, and that decree is spoken out and signed. That decree is still obeyed. You realize that is what happened in the lives of prophets in the Old Testament. Everywhere they went, their words were words of decree. Abraham with Abimelech, his word was a word of decree. Moses with Pharaoh, his word was a word of decree. And Elisha, even after Elisha had died, the authority of a decree did not leave his bone, his dead bones, because the dead man was lowered into the sepulchre. And the moment the dead man touched the bone of a man that was a prophet, a king, before he died, that man rose from the dead. Because anywhere you found a king in those days, he might be weak, he might be tired, he might be hungry, he might be thirsty, it, anywhere, anytime, dry season, rainy season, morning or afternoon or evening, his word was a word of decree. And that's why you find that sometimes a minister of God, you might feel that he's tired. 
sometimes he's been busy maybe preaching two three times a day and you will feel by this time now that his prayer will not be effective because by now he is physically tired or he's hungry or he's thirsty and uh, you need his attention you see the decree of a king does not depend upon his physical condition doesn't depend on how he dresses you know, it happens that I dress like this tonight if I like, I, I'm coming next Sunday, I wear a suit and that will be wonderful. Don't you think so? I mean, don't you think so? I, answer me, talk out. Uh-huh. You know, the decree of a king doesn't really affect the way he dresses. In my dress, as simple as I'm dressing up, if it's a king in the congregation, his word is a word of power. And if he changes and he puts on his style and he wears his suit, his decree, his word is a word of authority. And tonight, how I am so sure within me that the word I speak here from the pulpit against your sickness, against your trouble, against your family problem, is a word of decree, nothing can change it. Tonight you are getting healed. Tonight you are getting delivered. Tonight the devil is leaving your life and leaving your family. You saw that child that the woman brought here and said that child was paralyzed in one leg. And last Thursday she came here with the child and just praying here was the word of a decree. It happened and that child became well. You see, no matter what problem you have brought, you realize when a king issues a decree, it affects everybody in the society. Underneath the authority or the jurisdiction of that king. And once you get into this fellowship center, and I stand there in the authority that God has given to me, it doesn't matter how long you have been saved. It doesn't matter what part of the message you meet. Sometimes you don't even meet part of the message, although I'm not encouraging you to do that. Sometimes you just come in at the prayer time and you meet only the word of a decree coming out from the minister of God and your sicknesses, they just have to go. And if the devil has been chasing you, the moment you come here and I stand here and I decree a sin about your peace, about your deliverance, it has to be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to manifest that authority tonight. Because the Lord has given me the authority. But do you know, you know, I, I'm, I've been telling you, I am so eager to pass on this authority unto you. And you know that, uh, you know, you don't open it, I'll just tell you. In Romans chapter 1 verse 11, Paul the Apostle wrote to the Romans and he said, I'm so eager to come to you so that I will impart unto you spiritual gifts. He wanted to impart unto them the authority that he had in his life. And that's why I'm telling you that Monday Bible study, at this time, we're studying a special thing, Acts of the Apostles. And it is meant to impart authority unto you. And as you come next Monday, I'm going to show you how Peter, one of the apostles, the day he got the Holy Ghost baptism, how he manifested that authority. And next Monday as you come, I'll be showing you how you can manifest that authority. But tonight, whatever your problem may be, it's just now your chance to have your sicknesses and your troubles all go away and they are going in the name of Jesus before I pray let me read it to you again Romans sorry uh, Job chapter 22 verse 28 remember this is talking about a person is acquainted with God and I am acquainted with God I know it and you know it this is talking about a person having peace with God. I have peace with God. I know it, you know it. This is talking about a person that the word of God is stored up, laid up in his heart. The word of God is laid up in my heart. All the promises of God, I live on them. I read them every time. I meditate on them every time. 
This is talking about a person who has returned to the Lord Almighty and is maintaining a vital relationship with the Almighty. It's my testimony. I maintain that relationship. This is a person who has put iniquity far away from his tabernacle. And thank God the blood of Jesus came into my life and all iniquity is put far away. Now I can get into that authority. Verse 28, I shall decree a sin. I am a king. He chose me. He anointed me for, for this particular purpose. That I'll be able to help sinners and saints. I'll be able to help the sick, the tormented, the harassed. I'll be able to help anyone that needs a help from God. And therefore, I decree a sin. And it shall be established unto me. And the light shall shine upon my ways. Rise up as I take authority over your problem. Just close your eyes and bow your head. You realize, as I've told you, a decree doesn't, uh, you know, wait for how you feel. A decree doesn't wait for whether you are tired or hungry or whether you are, you know, thirsty. A decree, whenever it is issued out, is established. God establishes decrees. Jesus Christ backs up the decree that is said in his name. And here I come tonight with the authority, with the power that the Holy Ghost and Jesus Christ have given unto me. And I want to pray for you. And your sicknesses, they are going in the name of Jesus. So just bow your head as I pray for you. That man that has a terrible cough and your chest is almost sinking in. And uh, you know your chest is having so much pain and trouble. Just raise up one hand and lay the other hand on it. Where are you? Raise up your hand. All that I say is a decree against your sickness against your problem and they go in the name of Jesus Father in the name of Jesus Christ I thank you because of the authority you have given to me because I am acquainted with you I am acquainted with your promises I am acquainted with the prophecy that in the last days you will pour your spirit upon all flesh and therefore in the power of the spirit sicknesses will have to go all these who are raising up their hands, who are tormented in their chest, who have the pains upon their bodies, by the stripes of Jesus they are healed already. Amen. Therefore you pains and sicknesses, I command you, vanish away in Jesus' name. Amen. That cup that is worrying that lady over there, I command you, vanish away in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, because it's done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As a person, they have any problem in the neck, you raise up your hand. I'll pray for you, the thing will go. Lay the other hand on the neck. Whether it's throat or neck, wherever it is around the neck area, just lay your hand on it and raise up the other hand. Tonight you realize that the decree is spoken and signed and it's a decree that cannot be altered. Father, in the name of Jesus, all these people having problems in the neck area, I command you problem, you sickness and disease, vanish away in Jesus' name. You devil having your hand in that place, I command you. I command you, remove your hand in Jesus' name. I am a king over the spiritual realm of evil spirits, and I am commanding you, evil spirits, remove your hand in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you because I know it's done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. There's a person there you were poisoned more than three years ago, and you knew about it later. And uh, you know it has you know troubled your life so much. You knew you were poisoned. And tonight, if you raise up your hand, the Lord says you'll be delivered. Where are you? Raise up your hand. You are poisoned 
more than three years ago. Can you wave the hand at me so I can see you? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that person who has been poisoned for more than three years now, thus says the Lord, the effect of that poison in your body, in your blood system, in your spirit, in your brain, is totally nullified and destroyed tonight in Jesus' name. The Lord says that they wanted to destroy you and ruin your life. But he, the Lord Almighty, has come tonight to deliver you because he loves you. And he's not willing that you'll continue in that predicament. And therefore he says he comes tonight and you are delivered and the effects of that poison will never be upon your life anymore. Oh Lord, I thank you. I praise your name because you have delivered him in Jesus' mighty name. All those who are poisoned, as you are raising up your hand, I command all the effects of the poison upon your life. They are totally removed from tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's an individual in the large auditorium, you have brain trouble. And sometimes, uh, you know, it affects you to the point that you, you can't hear, you can't uh, know yourself, you can't discover yourself where you are. And you have been afraid that you sometimes, you know, just rush out and uh, run out into the public. You have been afraid what will come upon your life. And you are over there in the large auditorium. Where are you? Can you raise up your hand? I'll pray for you. It will go. I stand here tonight in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is King. And I'm a king under him. He has anointed me and sent me so that I'll be able to take authority over your problems. Now, that problem is there in your brain. That problem is there in your brain. Can I see your hand? In the, especially in the large auditorium. If you're in another auditorium, you can raise up your hand as well. But I'm looking for the person in the large auditorium. Where are you? Oh yes, I see it. Tonight the Lord is saying that your sleep will be different. That before you have not been able to sleep because of this brain problem. But tonight everything will change. You will find that devil leaving your brain and leaving your mind. And everything will be light from tonight in the name of Jesus. Father God in heaven, I come before you right now. And I'm seizing the authority against the evil spirit. Now you evil spirit, as I pray, I command you, vanish away in Jesus' name. No, you cannot remain there. You cannot stay there because I stand here in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I command you, devil, I command you, get away in Jesus' name. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus Christ upon your brain, upon your mind, upon your reasoning faculty. And I pray that your brain will cool down. That hotness there will cool down. That harassment of the devil there will vanish away. And from tonight, that man in the large auditorium, you are delivered in Jesus' name. And all you, all you people raising up your hands in the other auditoriums are command. You are free tonight from all the brain problems in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, because I know you have delivered them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. There's an adult man that is still wet in the bed. You are a man and you are an adult. And you are wet in the bed at night. And you just uh, raise up your hand. All eyes closed and all hearts bowed. Tonight will be the last night. It's an adult man and you are still wet in the bed. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. And you just raise up your hand. You are a man, you are an adult. I just saw you wet in the bed at night. I just saw you when I was praying. Raise it up well so I can see you. Can you wave the hand at me? Oh yes, I see. Yes, I see. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you recorded in the unchanging word of God that I will decree a thing and it shall be established in the courts of heaven. 
And here am I today, representative of Jesus Christ, with the authority of Jesus Christ, with the power of the Holy Ghost. And I come against the devil that has been tormenting these adult men, still wet in the bed. You devil, I command you, you cannot have a chance in the lives of these people anymore. Leave them alone in Jesus' name. Whatever is wrong, whatever is wrong in the body of these men who are raising up their hands. And that woman as well, there's a woman there. That woman, I command that all the things will be put in order in Jesus' name. And from tonight, from this very night, you wet the bed no more. Thank you, Father, because I know you've done it. I know you've done it. I know you've done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.